This is part 74 of C-sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss list collection class in C-sharp. List is one of the generic collection classes present in system.collection.generic namespace. I've listed a few of the generic collection classes here. We discussed a dictionary in parts 72 and 73. In this video, we'll discuss list collection class. A list class can be used to create a collection of any type. For example, we can create a list of integers, strings, decimals, and even complex types like customers, employees. The objects that are stored in the list can then be accessed by their index. Unlike arrays, lists can grow in size automatically. This class also provides methods to search, sort, and manipulate lists. Let's look at all of these in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So we'll be using this customer class for this demo. This is a very simple class with three auto-implemented properties. And then if you look in the main method, we have created three instances of this customer class. First of all, let's go ahead and create a customer array. And let's call this customers. And let's set the initial size of the array to two which means we can use this array to store two customer objects. So let's say customer of zero is customer one. And let's store customer two in customers of one location. Now, let's also try to store, you know, third customer. So customer three in customers of two location. So while the size of the array is two, we are trying to store a third object in this array. Let's compile this control shift B to build the solution and look at this build succeeded. We don't get any compiler error, but let me go ahead and run this and see what's gonna happen. Look at that. We get an exception at runtime. While the size of the array is two, we are trying to store a third object in the array. So arrays doesn't grow in size automatically and that's the reason why we have this error index out of range exception. But lists grow in size automatically. Let's look at them in action. So to create a list we use the list keyword and then we need to specify the type of the list. So what type of data are you going to store in this list? Is it going to be an integer list? or is it going to be a string list or any other simple data type. We can also create a list of complex types. So here we have a customer class. So I want to create a list of type customer. And let's call this maybe customers. And then look at this. There are several overloaded constructors to create a list. Okay, the first one doesn't take any parameters, but then if you look at the second one, um, there is an integer parameter and it says capacity. So this is the parameter that we can use to set the initial capacity, that is the initial size. Now let's set the size of this list to two. And then let's go ahead and add a customer object to this list. And to add a customer object to this list, we use add method. Since the list is of type customer, you can only add a customer object. So let's add a customer one object. And in a similar fashion, let's go ahead and add customer two and customer three. Look at that, the initial size is two, but we are trying to add a third customer as well. Let's build this, Control shift b Look at that, build succeeded. Now let me go ahead and run this by pressing Control f 5 So we didn't get a compiler error. Let's run this. And we don't have an exception either at runtime. That's because list grow in size automatically. Okay, so while the initial size is two, we are adding a third element, so the size is automatically bumped up. Okay, so lists grow in size automatically, but arrays doesn't. Okay, now we have some items stored in the list, and to retrieve an item from the list, we do that by its index. So I have customers list here. Now let's say I want to retrieve the first item from the list, and to do that, I use an index. So I pass the index of the item. So I'm going to pass zero. Now these index are zero based, so they start at zero. So if I want the first element, I pass the index as zero. If I want the second element, we will pass the index as one. So look at this. What is this, you know, collection returning back? It is returning a customer back. So let's go ahead and store that in a variable of type customer. So maybe let's call it C. Okay, so we have the customer object, 
and let's go ahead and print the details of uh, you know the customer so console dot right line and obviously customer class has got ID property name and salary so let's go ahead and print all of them so the object reference variable is C so C dot ID and similarly C dot name and then finally C dot salary okay so let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the object that is present um, at the 0th index look at that we get the first object and similarly if you want the second object you pass the index as 1 okay now is it possible to iterate through all the items within this collection absolutely we can either use a for loop or a for each loop let's look at using a for loop let's say I want to loop through each object within the collection and then print the respective customer details so I can use a for each loop so for each customer and maybe let's call the C in what is the name of the collection customers so let's pass that and then we simply print the respective customer ID name and salary so let me go ahead and run this and see if we get the output look at that we get all the three customer objects okay now can we use for loop absolutely we can use a for loop as well so let's see how to use a for loop so f when I use a for loop then we have to you know tell it how many times we want to loop through so let's say for int i is equal to 0 so we need to start at 0 remember you know the in its 0 index based okay so i is equal to 0 i less than the length of this customers collection okay so customers dot count okay so this property is going to give us the total number of elements within the collection and then i plus plus and here let's say customer c equals where do we need to get the uh, customer object from from the customers collection so customers of and then we can pass i i is looping through from 0 till the number of elements within that collection so let's go ahead and run this and see if it works as expected look at that it displays the details of the customers now what is going to happen if you by mistake include less than or equal to okay let me run this and see what's going to happen look at that all the three employees details are printed but then I also have index was out of range that's basically because what is the what is the count property going to return the count property is going to return the total number of items in that collection so what's the total number of items it's three and then we are starting at zero so zero to three is four we are trying to look an element in the fourth location of this collection which we don't have that's why we have that exception index um, was out of range okay so that's why anytime you want to loop through all the items in the collection use a for each loop instead of a for loop you might run into um, errors like this all right now all collections in this namespace I mean all the generic collections that are present in system.collections.generic they are strongly typed so including this list class so what do we mean by when we say list class is strongly typed now that means this is a list of type customer which means you can only add objects of type customer if you try to add an object of a different type let's say here I'm trying to add maybe an integer okay will it compile no look at that immediately I have a red squiggly we cannot add an object of a different type to this collection because this object is of type customer so you can add to this list only a customer object or any object that has inherited from the customer class let me explain what I mean so I can add a customer object to this list without any problem but then if I have a class that is deriving from that customer class let's go ahead and create another class here let's say public class maybe let's call the savings customer and this class is inheriting from customer class okay and let's go ahead and create an instance of that class here let's call the savings customer and let's call it 
sc equals new saving customer now can i add this object to this collection absolutely because this class is inheriting from customer class so we can add that as an inherited type so if i say customers dot add uh, savings customer object and if i compile this look at that i don't get an exception okay now if this class doesn't inherit from that class, you know, from the customer class, then these two classes are unrelated. Look at that. The moment I have removed that inheritance relationship, we immediately have a red squiggly. Okay? So that's what means when we say, you know, these classes, these generic collection classes are strongly typed. Okay? All right. Now, is it possible to insert an object at a specific location absolutely now let's say for example you know we have already added customer 1 customer 2 and customer 3 to this collection now i want to insert another customer i mean the same customer 3 object within the first location that is at the 0th index position is it possible absolutely and how do you do that we have a function called insert so we can use this function to insert an object at a specific location because if i use add function it's going to add you know customer 4 object in you know fourth location i mean in the third index position of this collection class but let's say my requirement is to push an object at 0th position and to do that you can use insert not only 0th position you can insert it at any position that you want so if you look at this function you can specify the index position at which you want to insert the object let's say I want to insert it at 0th position I pass 0 as the index and then let's pass the customer 3 object so now this customer 3 object is present in two locations at the 0th position and at the last position which is third index position okay so when we insert it at 0th position it's going to push the rest of the objects further down in the collection okay let's actually use a for loop and then print these details a for each loop and then loop through each object and see uh, what we get back so for each customer let's say c in our customers collection so at this point we should be we should be getting four objects back because we have just inserted customer three object at that location so let's simply print out the ID of the customer so that will now look at that V 119 is the third customer object customer 3 has got an ID of 119 and that's what we see here at, at the first location and at the last location so this object will be present at the last index position whereas this will be present at the first index position okay now is it possible to programmatically retrieve the index of a specific object within that list absolutely again we have another function called index of so let's use that function so let's say I want to find the index of this customer 3 object okay now let's use index of function and then obviously we need to pass the customer object so let's get rid of this code right here and let's pass our customer 3 object now look at that when we pass customer 3 object here the index of this I mean if you look at this customer 3 object it's present at two different locations within that list it's present at the 0th location and at uh, 1 2 and 3 third location so which index will I get will I get the 0th index or the third index let's look at that let me run this look at that um, let's actually use console.write line to print that index number so console.write line and that should print the index so let me run this now look at that by default I get the 0th index you know the first element that matches you know the index of that element will be returned from the collection okay now if you want the you know this index then there are several overloaded versions of this index of function so the first one the first parameter is obviously uh, the object that you want to look up in the collection the next parameter is the position that you want to start searching from 
So let's say I want the index of this customer 3 object. Then I know at 0th position there is a customer 3 object already. So let's start at position 1. Okay, so that started this index within the collection. So now if we run this, we should get the index of this customer 3 object. Look at that, we get that. This customer in uh, customer 3 object index position is 3. So we get that now. Now there is another overloaded version. You can also specify the number of items to look. So from this first index, okay, from in from position one, how many elements do I want to look? You can give that count. Let's say if I give two, so from position one, so zero, one, from this position, I want to only look up two items. And within those two items, I don't have customer three object. So what output am I going to get now? You will get minus one, meaning the item is not found within, within that range of elements within that list. Okay, now on the other hand, if we pass three, so third element is obviously the, the element that is present from first position to third position. We have this customer three object. So now we should get the index. What is going to happen if I pass four? Now, do we have five objects here? We don't. That's why it's going to throw an exception. So we get um, you know, an exception there, argument out of range exception. All right, and there are several other methods uh, that this list class exposes. We'll discuss them in our next video session. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.